from former CSIS director and former National Security Advisor Richard Fadden and former National Security Advisor and Intelligence, sorry, no, no, National Security and Intelligence Advisor to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, Vincent Rigby. Hi, Mr. Rigby. Hi, Mr. Fadden. Good to see you both. Good to be back. I appreciate you Thank making you. the time. Uh, Mr. Mr. Rigby, I'll, I'll start with you. Uh, I know both governments right now are hesitant to confirm the origins of those three other objects. If they are not able to recover much of them, uh, do, do you think they will continue to hesitate to go there, or is there a pattern established of behavior by China? I think it's very difficult to say right now, uh, based on the information that we have. We can't even definitively say that um, these objects that were shot down, the three over the weekend, were of Chinese origin. And certainly what they're saying publicly right now is they can't. They can't definitively say uh, whether they are Chinese. Uh, we don't know for certain whether they're balloons or another type of object. So there's just a great deal of mystery surrounding this right now, and that's actually the headline. And I think you heard that from Minister Mendoncino as well in terms of they need to get this information. And until they get this information and they see the wreckage, it's going to be very, very difficult to pull the pieces together. It's a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle right now, but several pieces are missing, if not more. I was telling you, Mr. Fadden, in the break that I was speaking to some of my sources who are involved in this who were saying finding those missing puzzle pieces, as Mr. Rigby so accurately um, characterizes them, is almost next to impossible, given the weather conditions, given where they went down. In the absence of them, how uh, difficult is it to ascertain the level of security threat here? Well, it is difficult and there's no certainty. I mean, I, I understand why the government to some degree is reticent to go on about it, but if you contrast what our government is saying with that which the American government is saying, it's pretty telling. They are much, much more firm in their view while still maintaining the possibility that additional intelligence may send us off another path. But until we get it all done, I think uh, we're going to have to up our security level, our threat level. I mean, the first balloon was clearly Chinese. It was an invasion of our sovereignty. It should not have been here, and it was the size of a regional airliner. Mm -hmm. So if that's not a threat, both in international law and from a kinetic th thing, I don't know what is. Um, and I think we are being a slightly too cautious in Canada. I mean, we have had three of these plus the balloon. They have all occurred within 10 days of one another. I mean, coincidence is a wonderful thing, but I do think we're pushing it a little far. What are your thoughts on that, Mr. Rigby? I think, again, it's, it's difficult to draw any definitive conclusions, especially about the last three, but I completely agree with Dick. Uh, the first one has been identified as a, as a spy balloon, for lack of a better term, and it did, and it, it did pose a threat. There's no doubt to Canada's national security. Whether the other three items are, are national security threats, only time will tell. It's difficult, difficult to say, but I, I totally agree with Dick. Just based on what we've seen with that first balloon, this is reason for concern. Um, this is, again, reflective of Chinese behavior that we've seen in the past, aggressive. I mean, you can say, well, everybody collects intelligence, but this is a, a balloon flying over your sovereign space, collecting information. And uh, a more assertive China, a China that we've seen conducting a lot of hostile activities against Canada, whether it's foreign interference, whether it's cyber attacks, whether it's intellectual property theft, it's just one more step, I think, in these, in these Chinese actions. And so hopefully uh, it'll resonate with the government, but also resonate with the Canadian public. And I suspect that uh, the United States is going to be reaching out to allies and saying, listen, look at what we've seen here. We need to do more as, as, as allies. The interesting part also jumping off of this is even if you separate the three, the, the three latest ones, that first one, which um, you know, we've all uh, talked about, is from China, according to both authorities in the U.S. and in Canada. The U.S. says is actually part of a much larger program, a pretty well-developed program uh, that saw 40 of them, as many as 40 of them. Uh, what, I mean, it's difficult to assign motivation, obviously, but on the question of what might be motivating China here, what comes to mind for you, Mr. Fadden? Yeah, I think that's a very good question because the answer to that question will help us answer a whole slew of other, of other questions. I mean, I think we have to put ourselves to some degree into the Chinese shoes. Uh, we in Canada recently have irritated them considerably with the Indo-Pacific strategy by saying that they're adversaries. I was about 10 days ago uh, on a virtual call with a Chinese think tank, and boy, did they make it clear they were annoyed with us. Uh, you know, they th didn't think it was necessary. You know, we're con we, we continue to uh, transit the Taiwan Straits. Biden and the United States generally are being much more aggressive. So they may actually feel put upon by the West right now. 
And maybe they pick this as one way of signaling to, that, to us uh, they're capable of pushing back. It's not a particularly dangerous or kinetic activity, this balloon. But I think if there is anything that I think has some possibility of coming true is that they feel that with all of this pushback by the West, they feel their national honor is a little bit being impugned and they're pushing back. The key now is to not allow it to escalate because if they wanted to drive a wedge, for example, between the president in the United States and the Congress, well, he's do they're doing a very good job of it and they're distracting him from a whole raft of things. So I think part of the why is they want to push back against the West to make sure we never forget that they're an important country. Uh, just on that on that point, Mr. Rigby, um, you know, if, if that is in fact the case, and we have witnessed what the political reaction has been like in the U.S., right, where there was all this very public back and forth about the decision to wait a little while before, uh, you know, almost a week before shooting down uh, the first balloon. It, 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 you know, how, how important is the way in which uh, both the both Canada and the United States reacts to this, and how closely do you imagine China is watching it? Oh, I suspect China is watching extremely, extremely closely. And there's absolutely no doubt that it was a spy balloon, notwithstanding Chinese protestations that it was just a meteorological balloon. But I mean, whether this was an escalation um, with this particular spy balloon, the Americans have indicated and the commander of NORAD has indicated that there have been previous incursions by uh, Chinese spy balloons that were not necessarily caught in real time by, by NORAD. So there, there may be a bit of a pattern here. So it's difficult to say whether this was specifically a, an escalation. We'll see what happens with the, with the discovery of the debris for the, for the three uh, objects uh, shut down over the, over the weekend. But, but without a doubt, they're going to be watching very closely. And, and it's quite interesting to watch what's happening south of the border because this is a political football, without a doubt. Uh, we know that, broadly speaking, the Republicans and the Democrats have, you know, more or less the same threat assessment of China. But you can see the way the Republicans are, are, are pushing the Biden administration. And in many respects, the, the prime, one, of the, one of the motivations for Biden right now is to, is to respond to those, those Republican protestations and, and uh, not to be seen as, as, as weak. And this, this, you've seen this throughout U.S. history when it, when it comes to China or, or Russia or other hostile state actors. So without a doubt, China's watching this very carefully and, and they're probing in to see what kind of a political and, and uh, a more kinetic reaction is. And we've seen to some extent that there has been a kinetic reaction. Yeah. Oh, certainly. Mr. Fadden, I just have a few seconds left. Last word to you. I can see you want to jump in there. I just wanted to say, pattern or not, the spy balloon should not have happened. Uh, I have difficulty believing it just happened because somebody made a mistake. So uh, Vincent may well be right, there may be a pattern or not, but the balloon occurred, it has raised our threat level. I would not like to be the pilot of a small plane in North America mm -hmm. whose uh, transponder goes offline these days. That alone is disrupting North America. Well, that's really been the threat that they've pointed to, right? These three mm -hmm. latest objects have been at a lower altitude right. and pose a threat to yeah. people, uh, to, to vehicles up in the air. Okay, I have to leave it there. I'm out of time. Thank you very much, both of you, for your time and your analysis this evening. Uh, Richard Fadden and Vincent Rigby.